Hey friends, good morning. We've got a bad rainstorm outside this morning. You may hear the rain, it's really coming down hard and some thunder from time to time. But I've got an old Westinghouse, we'll call this a tank motor, it's a cast iron motor. Uh, they made these until 1911 and in 1911, well starting in 1912, Westinghouse halted the use of cast iron motors and they got the bright idea that they would use stamped steel motors from here on out and pot metal bearing carriers. So I don't work on anything made 1912 or later. If it's Westinghouse, it's got to be 1911 or before. So it'll be a nice cast iron motor like this. Uh, this one has got some problems. It's got some bearing problems. Uh, probably some centrifugal start, uh, centrifugal switch problems on the inside. I've got it hooked up here to a test lead. I'm about to plug it in. Let's listen to it run. All right, you can see it arcing in there. I'm going to unplug it. I don't want to let it run anymore like that. So we've got some obvious problems inside. <coughs> I'm going to take this thing apart and see what we've got. Y'all stay tuned. Hey guys, here's the rotor out of this Westinghouse tank motor. I've just got it standing up in the end bell right here, but you can see the internal centrifugal start switch. See what it looks like. It's got these little fingers here that sling open upon centrifugal force when the motor starts up. Uh, it'll start out engaged in the start winding here and as it gets up to speed the centrifugal switch, cent centrifugal force will throw these uh, fingers out uh, thereby breaking contact with the start windings and making contact with the run windings. So all these little fingers will sling open here and when you cut power to the motor and the motor starts to slow back down, these fingers will be, will be pulled back inward again. So they'll be in place when the motor goes to start up again. They'll be contacting the start windings. All right, and we've got a problem here with um, uh, the little insulator piece that goes up underneath here to insulate this from the rotor is broken. And... Uh, Somebody put a piece of tape on it just to hold that in there. But this is an insulator right here. And I don't have any more made. I've got, this is my one that I use as a pattern. Uh, and I've got some more material right here. So I'll lay out some of these and, and cut some of these out. Uh, this fiber board's getting a little harder and harder to find. But uh, I'll make a couple of these insulators to go in between there. See, it's supposed, to, it's supposed to insulate this from coming in contact with the rotor. So we'll make, uh, we'll make some of those insulators and might have to work on this rotor shaft a little bit. It's, uh, let's see if I can turn it around here and get it to focus. We've got some uh, grooving in the shaft here, front side and back side. So we'll see if we can take care of that, clean that up a little bit. And then we'll make new bearings to, the bearings get pressed into here. You can see the old one down in there. And there's the bearing. It's got that little cap in the center. That just keeps the oil from coming out the back of the motor because this is where your oil cup screws into right here. There's a wick that goes up in that, uh, that hole down in the bottom. And uh, that wick goes up in there and that's how we get lubrication to the bearing. So, uh, We'll take care of that. All right, more to come. Okay, so we got the new bearings in. Here's the uh, the rear bearing. And uh, it's in there all ready to go. I made a new insulator for the centrifugal switch here. And it's ready to go in. And I've got the bearing. I don't know if this thing's going to focus or not. It's 
probably a little too reflective, but there's a new bearing there. There's the old one that come out. I had to destroy the other bearing. Uh, one of them I just could not get out. Uh, I was afraid to press, uh, put too much pressure in the press, so I had to machine it out. So the other bearing got destroyed, but this is this is one of them. All right, so we're ready to go back together and uh, see what see what else is going to need or if this is going to be it. All right, y'all stand by. Hey friends, well we got the motor back together. Um, let's see, we did a new insulator in on the uh, centrifugal start switch. Uh, put new bearings front and rear. Had a little problem with something scrubbing in there. Couldn't figure out what it was. And sometimes, unfortunately, with these things, you don't have any option except just to take it apart and put it back together about 30 times <laughs> before you get everything. Uh, lined up and everything we adjusted the axial end play on it put all new fiber thrust washers in there and um, found out where it was scrubbing up in the front end up there uh, and so we've got that cleared up and uh, just turned it upside down so I could put a couple of drops of oil in it there since we don't have oil cups with it and uh, here again I've got it uh, hooked up to my test lead here and I'm gonna plug it in and let you listen to it run. You probably hear the rain outside. So we'll see if... Uh... All right, here we go. All right, runs real quiet now. So let me unplug this thing and you can hear the centrifugal start switch when it closes, when that Got a long spin down time. Wow. There you go. Okay, you hear that clackety clackety clack in there? That's those three fingers that sling open that are spring loaded. And um, they don't close until the shaft comes to almost a stop again. So uh, you saw what a long spin down time that motor has now with the new bearings in there and with the blade on the front acting like a flywheel a weighted flywheel it's going to be even a longer spin down time when the blades on it so there's that one y'all 1910 roughly um who knows these things were made uh, could be 06 anywhere from 06 to about um 1911 i uh, didn't get the rest of the stuff that goes along with it to help me date it the motor tag's gone so I'm just judging by the fact that it's a cast iron motor and that's about the period that these were made. All right, y'all take care.